Good afternoon, everybody. I was sitting here doing some reading out of uh, 1 John chapter 3. Uh, John uh, writes this letter to the believers, uh, to the children of God. And in here, he makes some very clear statements regarding our transformation as believers. And uh, I thought of calling this, uh, topicing this uh, lesson, uh, who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your daddy? Because John here writes uh, distinguishing uh, different characterizations of uh, children of God uh, who are born of God and children of the devil, those who uh, carry out Satan's deeds. And so listen to what he's saying. Now he's writing to Christians, to believers. And uh, so he's writing to us and he calls us children. He refers to us as children, uh, children of God. And he says, dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous. I like how he just plainly says that. He, he's, this is a very basic teaching, y'all. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Talking about God. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil. Now let that sink in. The one who does righteousness is of God because God is righteous. And so righteousness comes from God. And so if we are children of God, then we are doing what our daddy does, right? So the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil had been sinning from the beginning. And by the way, I started in verse number seven. I'm now in verse number eight. Uh, the reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And so Christ came and he died for us and the whole purpose and he was resurrected. And the whole purpose of his works was so that he could destroy the devil's work, okay? Verse nine says, no one who is born of God continues in sin or will continue to sin. This is what he said. So this is how you know, you know, if you like, you really want to know your status, this is, this is it. Verse nine, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. Now, let me clarify that again. We have this talk often. I'm not talking about, uh, well, let me just say what he's talking about. He's talking about a uh, lifestyle of sin. He's talking about habitual sin. He's not talking about just a sin that came in a moment of weakness or a mistake that we make. Uh, we will never reach sinless perfection down here. So he's not talking about that. He's talking about habitual sin, sin out of habit things that we plan to do, things that we willfully do every day, things that we, you know, go into the habit of doing. He's talking about that, okay? He says, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. And here's why. Because God's seed remains in them. So you got the seed of God in you which means it's a righteous seed. So if you have a righteous seed in you, then that means righteousness is what's being produced within you and it works out of you. And so that's where uh, Paul talks about in the church in Philippians, he says that we ought to work out our own salvation. So what is, what are, what is it that we're working out? We're working out what's in us. Well, what's in us is what God has put in us. So we're working out what God has placed in us. 
which is a righteous seed, okay? The fruit of the spirit. We have the spirit in us. So then if the spirit is working in us, then what happens is the spirit will uh, produce righteous fruit. And so we will begin to live out those things. And so this is what happens when regeneration takes place, when we are transformed, when we are born again. Let me read the beginning of verse 9 again. He says, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. Jesus said, you know a tree by its fruit. So it doesn't matter what our profession is or what we profess to be. It's about what we really are consist of. Are we truly born again? How can we know? Well, John makes it simple in his epistle. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Why? Because God's seed remain in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Listen to what he says. They cannot go on sinning. It's, again, it's not that sin is not a reality in our experience. But we're talking about habitual sin. We're talking about sin of, uh, of, 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 of habit, something that we do and we choose to do all the time. Uh, like, for example, an addiction you know, a habit, like a, an addiction, something that you do all the time. Well, we don't have addictions because of the issue uh, of, well, not the issue, but because of what Christ has done for us on Calvary. That's freedom. He has saved us from the bondage of sin. So those who are born of Christ are no longer slaves to sin. If we become slaves to sin, it's because we have given ourselves over to it. But yet he says here that no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. So if the Holy Spirit is living in you, that means the spirit is controlling. It is filling you. And to be filled with the spirit means to be controlled by the spirit. When you think of the comparison or the contrasting that Paul makes in Ephesians when he says, be not drunk with wine, wherein there's excess, meaning being drunk with wine, we're under the influence and the control of wine. So that which we would normally not do, we find ourselves doing because we are under the influence. Well, that's the same way that the Holy Spirit works. It, is, it controls us and we are under its influence. So therefore, the thing that we normally would not do, which is the right thing, <laughs> the Holy Spirit functions and controls us and helps us to carry out those things. So you see the, the similar effects between alcohol and the Holy Spirit. It's controlling. It's, it's influential. It, 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 it governs us, our thoughts, our actions. And so it stirs up the desires in us to do the right thing. This is the experience of the one who is born of God. You get what I'm saying? This is an automatic process that is happening on the inside of us. And so no one is born of God. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because the seed of God remains in them. It never goes away. It stays in us. They cannot go on sinning. Okay. Because the seed remains in us. And let me read it properly. Because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning. 
because they have been born of God. Verse 10, this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. That's why I asked the question, who's your daddy? <laughs> Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. And nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Oh, John goes deep. So he says that anyone who does not do the right thing is not God's child. Nor is anyone who does not love their brother or their sister. So who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? You know, there's a common thing that happens in our world where a child grows up under the impression that one particular man is their father and later on in life finds out that their father is actually someone else. You know, and so um, I guess to spiritualize that and what does that mean to us is that maybe we can fall under a sense of self-deception, thinking uh, that God is our daddy. I've actually heard someone say that all the world is God's children. Like we all are God's children, you know, everybody in the world. And, but when I read my Bible, especially scriptures like this, I learned that that's not true. One thing is we are all God's creation. He created us all in his image and in his likeness, and he designed us to be like him, but we all are not like him because we all don't live like him. We don't strive to be what he has ordained for us to be. And so therefore, I, I disagree with the fact or the saying that we are all God's children, not according to scripture. Verse 10 says, though this is how we know who the children of God are. So if this was, if all of us was God's children was a fact, then why would John even write this? He's writing to the children of God. This is not addressed to the world. This is address, this letter, whole letters addressed to people who profess to be believers, who say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And so the question today is, who's your daddy? Is, is God your daddy? You would know by the fact that you live like him. Or is Satan your daddy? You would know by the fact if you live like him. And so I know who my daddy is. Hey man, the, the DNA test has proven <laughs> who my daddy is. Hey man, I pray that you get your DNA test. Amen. And, and, and confirm that God is your daddy. God bless y'all. May keep you as my prayer.